Hi guys, this is Alana. Welcome to our COVID, I can never remember, COVID conversation. <laughs> it looks like Jamie, you and I uh, got the memo that it's wear your black hoodie day. Is okay. this our um, quarantine wardrobe? <laughs> well, I was just thinking I have really like cultivated the rolled out of bed look these last few days. It seems like every for you own it. <laughs> every day that we record, I feel like I'm less put together because I'm like, it, you just get more comfortable. You know, when we're recording for the podcast, I'm a little more. I know. Yeah. You know, but, but look at my, okay. So this sweatshirt is my mother-in-law gave this to me. The octopus. Yeah. The giant Pacific octopus is my That's cool. favorite animal of all time. And she got this for me one year uh, when they were That's coming fun. to visit. Yeah. Well, I will go ahead and warn you. I know people listening on the podcast aren't even seeing us, um, but these are oh, up on YouTube. Oh, that's true. Yeah, they're <laughs> no, no, up no. on YouTube but, and Facebook. But one day, like I absolutely want to warn you, I'm probably going to show up. If we keep doing this daily or, or near daily, I'm going to show up in my bathrobe every so often because it's warm and cozy and why not? <laughs> and it covers everything. I mean, it really does. It's, it's so modest. modest. <laughs> so how's stuff going? Good. Things are going well. I just realized this morning, though, I was just thinking about it, and I was like, I don't know that it's fully hit me how bizarre the times are that we're living in. We kind of yeah. got, like, eased into this. I mean, it was pretty sudden, but at the, for, for me, at least, my kids were in school, and then they were off for spring break. And then they just right. extended the spring break, and we kind of gradually, right. every day, there's more news. But it's kind of, I mean, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I feel like more than ever, I'm uh, like realizing, wow, this is the, it's bizarre, the time that we're living in. It's mm -hmm. just crazy. So I don't know. Yeah, no, it truly is. I'm trying to think about the phrase like temporary new normal. To me, that reminds me yeah. that things are going to feel normal but it's going to be a temporary <laughs> new normal. And, right. and that's been encouraging. Yeah. My husband and I had a good long talk yesterday. We watched um, the second Lord of the Rings movie, which, which is kind of a, um, uh, my brain's not working. It's just usually when we watch it as a family, we'll watch like half an hour, 45 minutes at a time, but we watch like all a movie to start to finish last night. Uh, an achievement. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then, you know, so that was fun. And then the kids went upstairs and my husband and I were just downstairs talking, just kind of similar, you know, it's a bizarre situation. It's a heavy situation. There's a lot of potential for things to go really, really, really like horribly wrong. Absolutely. And, you know, I'm still holding on to the hope that this is our temporary new normal. And, wouldn't it be a blessing if we all emerge from this in the spring with a deeper sense of appreciation for each other and for our health? And we look back and again, we just say, wow, guys, we got through this. That's, that's kind of what I'm, I feel like the first few days I felt very heavy hearted. I wouldn't call it anxious, but just very heavy. And now I'm actually starting to feel hopeful. I think a ton of that has to do with the fact that it's spring and it's hard to not feel helpful <laughs> in the spring, even if you're not in the middle of a pandemic. And some of it's just, <clears throat> excuse me, recognizing how many things we truly do have to be thankful for. You know, the, the two of the major ones being our families together and we have our basic needs met. So I don't know. I've been actually feeling really good the last like two days. Yeah, I have too. And, you know, it was very sad. I know I mentioned yesterday that I was really encouraged by the headlines about China and right. how they had no new cases. But at the same time, you know, Italy had the highest death toll to date. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there absolutely is this balance of, you know what, we need to steward the bad stories. We, we can't just turn our heads to the bad story, right. but right. we need to look forward to, and, and I still maintain that if you're reading the news and you're coming away, and I've been there, this happened to me during um, you know, when the Islamic State was causing these mm -hmm. attacks, mm -hmm. exodus of countries, and I got so heavy hearted and so just personally invested in the stories that I became depressed without even knowing yeah. it. And I look back and I'm yeah. like, well, yes, I was depressed, but I, I mm -hmm. didn't know it. And if you find yourself coming away from the news and these stories, 
and turning those bad feelings into prayers isn't working for you, just take a break. It's okay. You know, mm-hmm. like yeah. we, we might need to distance ourselves sometimes, but in general, for most of us that are feeling pretty emotionally somewhat balanced and yes, it's sad to hear the sad stories, but we're not internalizing or feeling chronically anxious about them. I, we need to see both and, but we need to, to look for the hope and really mm-hmm. balance those difficult stories with hope. One of the, one yeah. of the, the fun side benefits to this. So our kids, so I don't know if I've said this on the air, but I'll just say it. So our daughter's name is Eva and our kids have created a band and it, they call it, Eva, they call it Evis Beavis. <laughs> <laughs> and so I don't know where that name came from, but it's this band. So they have been creating these, even my oldest, who is like way too cool for this stuff, kind of. Mm-hmm. It. And so, words, and then, so we, they've been wanting us to have a battle of the bands. And so Eva created like this, this poster like thing advertising battle of the bands, Evis Beavis versus the skulls. And I'm like, well, who's the she said, it's you and dad. Oh, how funny. <laughs> so, last night, we indeed let them, you know, and she is, she's pretty incredible. Like, I could totally see her actually becoming a songwriter. She created really? her own lyrics about stuff. Yeah. So, uh-huh. um, like, Oh My Star was the name of her original hit. Of course, she did uh-huh. also Let It Go by, you know, Frozen. <laughs> right, right, right. But she did Oh My Star, and it's like, some people think that you're a planet, but really, you're a star. <laughs> huh, cute. You know, yeah, that's adorable. My two youngest do that a lot, too. You know what, could you pause it? I want to ask my son if, if he will let me read the lyrics to one of his on the air. Yes. I'm going to go ask him real quick. Okay, Absolutely. Hold on. Okay, so they said that I could share this. So this is from my two youngest. They're they're super into rock, and they are trying their hand at making like a Christian rock band. Um, so I don't want to be like the mom who's like, look what my kids did. But I I think that there's a lot of spiritual encouragement in here, which is I'm sharing it for that reason. It really isn't just to be like my kids made a stick figure. You know what I mean? Shoot, I- <laughs> I will be the one to brag about your kids because they're awesome. Like you really. Oh, are. well, thank you. So I'll brag <laughs> for you so you don't feel bad about it. Go ahead. Okay, that it. sounds good. All right. So the song they wrote is called Eternal Sacrifice. How many times do we forget his pain? We seem to ignore it again and again. We take for granted the sacrifice, but the father paid a marvelous price. The son hung upon the cursed tree to bring forgiveness to you and me. Whipped and beaten and hung to die. Eli, Eli, Lama, Shabbatani. But the son of God. But the son God sent was the price he spent. Now we can live with him for eternity. And then here's the chorus. Jesus paid the eternal sacrifice. The pain he endured, let us live with the Lord. It is not for him, oh sorry, if not for him, we'd be condemned to hell. But now with the Lord, our God will dwell. The wrath of the Lord was taken out on the son. Jesus's final cry was, it is done. The son carried his own cross to the land. The nails were pounded into his hands. 39 times the lash hit his back, but still the sun did not attack. His clothes were divided, the soldiers rolled dice, and all so the sun could pay the price. Whipped and beaten and hung to die, it is finished, his final cry. Wow, that Isn't is Isn't that fantastic. cool? Yeah. I was, my husband and I were kind of blown away. <laughs> so do they have music to go with it? Like, do they actually- I believe they do, but um, I don't know it. They, they work out in the garage, so for Christmas- we got my youngest, um, it's not like a full drum set. It's like a drum pad. Yes. And we have talked then, about needing yeah. to get the kids together to jam. Eva asks, asks about that all the time. Obviously not in the next few weeks, but. Unless we try to do it like on Google Hangouts. Can you oh. imagine trying to like coordinate with that tiny bit of lag and stuff like that? That would be interesting. <laughs> it would be interesting. Yes. But they want, interesting. they want your son to be their, their guitarist for sure. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, I, I love that they're, you know, in this time, I think it's a neat time for kids' creativity to come out. Um, I just went, so I was going to try to get in another Amazon order um, kind of before they <laughs> shut down, if they're going to shut down, which mm-hmm. <laughs> please God help them not. But I was thinking like, I kind of want to stock up now on um, 
like board games, card games, you know, mm -hmm. things to do. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And yeah. So I had all this stuff in my Amazon cart and then I was thinking, well, there's a game store, like a board game store, two miles from our house. Um, I'm sure like every, every other or most other small businesses are struggling. So what I might do, I'm going to call them when they open today or at least when they're you know scheduled to open and see like if I can just put an order over the phone and, you know, just pick it up, you know, curbside pickup <laughs> for board games. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty I, cool. I feel a little bit of a, a burden to not overlord, not overlord, um, overload Amazon. Cause I know like they're, mm -hmm. they're sending out a lot of really essential things and to be totally honest, like our family could do without extra board games and not die from boredom. Um, yeah. No so pun intended. I was thinking, yeah. If, um, if that's going to work. I didn't mean yeah. the die part. I meant board. Oh, I was thinking the die, like guys. As soon as I said. It oh, worked. Oh, oh it I was worked. Thinking, I was thinking that you were like, you know, thinking <clears throat> coronavirus, death. And I'm like, wait, that was morbid. I didn't mean that. I meant board. Isn't it funny? Like I was re-listening to our episode yesterday and like feeling so apologetic for how morbid I am. But I also you, feel like that kind of like, if you can't laugh at some of these things, then it's even scarier. Yeah. Well, so do you not regret not editing that? I think it was fine. I think it was fine too. And if anything, it gives all of our women listeners an absolute reason to stress eat right now, ladies. Mm -hmm. The survival of the human race might depend on you eating that extra bit of chocolate. <laughs> I popped popcorn and I ate popcorn along with chocolate chips and I thought of your you're going to think for. about that every single time now that you've got the munchies. That's like, right. I don't really need to eat, but I'm going to. <laughs> no. Yeah. I, I feel like our bodies are, are made. And again, morbid warning. We need to have some kind of like code word. <laughs> morbid warning. Our bodies are made to survive famine. And no, I don't think it's going to turn into anything near that extreme. Right. But that's why we stress eat. You know, like when society is running great, that's a problem. At times like this, like I really do feel like I am doing my duty by having that extra chocolate right now. I have never thought of that. That's really totally obvious and mm -hmm, logical. Mm -hmm. The stress yeah. eating thing. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Because you know, you know, um, or you know, even in the fall, do you get munchies in the fall? Mm -hmm. Um yeah, it's so that we can have that little extra bit of padding yeah, <laughs> around our bellies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is interesting. So I've got a question for you. Mm -hmm. So if you knew two weeks ago that all of this was going to happen and you had like, let's, um, I, again, I feel so apologetic about everything because this is such a serious thing, but I do want to try to keep things lighthearted. Okay. So you have received a thousand dollar like gift card to spend. It cannot be on toiletries or groceries but it can be for anything not necessary for your survival, but that you want to have on hand, what would it be? Hmm. That's a tough one. Let me think. Have you ever seen, I think it's Night at the Museum, the thinker statues like, oh, I'm thinking, oh, I'm hmm. thinking. thinking. <laughs> um, okay, wow. That's a good question because part of me is like, well, I don't think that I would totally panic because I know the stores are open. Um, I okay, so okay, but it can't be toiletries or anything that's that's in shortage right now. Meaning it can't like be, yeah, it can't be toilet paper and hand sanitizer, survival, right? and mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. the toilet paper and hand sanitizer are necessary for survival. They're just shortage. Um, Can I interrupt you for an embarrassing um, confession? Maybe yeah. not a confession. Yeah. I'm actually going to order some of those period panties today. Oh, okay. You know what I'm talking I've heard about? Of them. Yeah. Yeah. I've never tried them before, but um, you know, guys, if this is TMI, just find another podcast. This is what Jamie and I are going to be talking about. <laughs> but you know, okay. So really we're being candid guys. Okay. When I'm on my period, I use pads. And even when I pee, like, I don't really, like, it's absorbent enough that I don't need to use a lot of toilet paper. And so I'm thinking, like, if I just get some kind of extra absorbent underwear, even if not for the periods, I'm not going to need 
as much toilet paper for drying myself off after I use the bathroom. So I'm going to see how that works. Um, I really do feel like in all seriousness, I think that when all is said and done, I think we're going to move away from toilet paper as a, a country just because it's not super environmental friendly. It's not really great for septic systems is my understanding. It's not very like energy efficient or even um, financially efficient. You know, like we were able to order a bidet. We haven't set it up yet. We were able to order one that just kind of attaches to the toilet for like $35. That is and, the one that we ordered. And I think you and yes, I confessed that yes. on the same day to <laughs> each other. That's what Jamie, we ordered a bidet. Well, and but we really, know if, yeah. We have a Go friend ahead. that we have a friend that has one and has had one for a while, and I think his daughter, in, in light of wanting to be more environmentally conscious and, mm-hmm, and reduce mm-hmm. the carbon footprint, and so we were kind of like, "Whoa, bidet!" I mean, that's that's a fancy, little extreme, yeah. And, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, European. Right. I mean, this was a year ago, right? Um, and so, but but we were Matt was like, "Well, you know, maybe this would be a good time to do it, just because we had talked mm-hmm. about it." just as mm-hmm. being something that could help. I know. The yeah, exactly. And, and the budget, you know, I don't know. We both the have, budget. you know, families of five. We go, we spend a lot of money on toilet paper. Yeah. Well, and the mm-hmm. toilet paper crisis again, I don't. Okay. So I, I don't mean to digress, but I still don't understand why toilet paper, like why toilet paper? I see the, the shelves are stocked with diapers for babies and formula there. I've never seen a store so far that's out of diapers or formula why toilet paper? Why is that? Do you know what I mean? I do. And I've heard a lot of people like to me, I don't, I don't get the confusion over it because in most households, toilet paper is a necessity that you don't want to run out of. Right. It's big and bulky when you're sick, you know, you, I guess like, I know here in Alaska, a lot of people use toilet paper instead of Kleenex. Right. Um, so I don't know, to me, it doesn't make illogical sense. Right. Um, it's a, it's I a, think one of the few things that we have that is expendable and disposable. And if you're totally out of it, yeah, what that's do you a problem. do? Mm-hmm, yeah. mm-hmm. Unless you go to like the cloth diaper route where you. Right, right. Or you get your period panties and just let yourself think a little. Go with <laughs> it. Go with I'll it. I'll let you know how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So back to our $1,000 thousand dollar gift card have you decided what you're gonna do wow i just don't okay so i could ah, all right it's hard because like i always am going to when i ask myself that question i'm going to the super practical okay you know what i mean can i tell you what i would do okay so it just came to me so one of the things that i would do i was just thinking about this is I would, I had been thinking, I don't color my hair very often. Every once in a while, mm-hmm, I'll get a bottle, mm-hmm. you know, and, I, but I was thinking about maybe for Mother's Day or, you know, something where I, I got money from someone. You're going to go oh, neon purple, aren't you? No. That would be cool. <laughs> so that, some people can pull that off. I was just going to get like blonde highlights. My hair is okay. just kind of like this. Like medium, professional. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like just mm-hmm, blonde mm-hmm. highlights. I, I have okay. a hard time justifying the cost for that. But yeah, for yeah. like a year, I've been thinking of maybe Birds, doing that. Splurge, yeah. And of course now, and I was getting kind of close to thinking maybe I'd do it soon. And then, you know, now all of a sudden it's not really an option. I don't know. Some people, mm-hmm. I guess, go, but I would, I don't, I would go, I will get my hair cut and done. Yeah. Because, for a yeah. thousand bucks. That's an expensive hair. Not for a thousand. <laughs> I would use some of it for that. Yeah. No, that um, sounds neat. What's something else? Um, I mean, I just think of books or, but I, you know, mm-hmm. I'm trying to purge right now some of our clutter. And so physical books, I don't know if I would do physical books, but, um, and audio books, like there, uh, mm-hmm. maybe I would get some audio books. I'm trying to think of like, oh, like art supplies for the kids. I was yeah, just thinking. Craft staff. That's a big one that would be on my them. list. We're kind of, we have some watercolor paints, but they really like a little like Crayola the little like the thicker Crayola paint um, um uh-huh. so I would I would maybe get them some yeah. paint or some you know art supplies which again it's not like I can't go out right now and get them if I wanted to I doubt that they're out of art well maybe they're out of art supplies because kids are out of school I don't know I you know what them. I would do if you were to go out I would go to like the um not to Walmart or something like Michael's exactly the things that don't also sell 
the essentials. Yeah. <laughs> I think that you'd have better luck going yeah. there. Yeah, but I, I think, don't know. Yeah. What about you? I'm, I'm having a hard time with this, but it's a good question. Board games, for sure. I was um, thinking about I also, games. I would want to stock up on some entertainment that doesn't require, like, Wi-Fi. So, yeah. you know, that would be the physical books. Maybe even, like, a CD player and a whole bunch of audio books on CD. Um, yeah, my kids have actually really been into, they've been getting into audio books lately on mm -hmm. CD because I have a couple, yeah. not many, but I have a few because this yeah. is a question. I mean, I, how much longer uh, will our bandwidth be able to sustain all of this? I don't know how that works. I know. Um, I don't either. It's a little frightening and I'm just choosing to not mentally go down that route right now. <laughs> well, and I feel like if it was gonna collapse or have trouble it would have already happened because everyone's already kind of home I don't know and a lot of people yeah who knows home. I don't know yeah I mean, but yeah we won't go down that route no though. yeah no idea a few other things um I was thinking it'd be fun to have a couple outdoor games because we're blessed with like a, a tiny fenced in backyard um, oh that's nice and so like did you ever play bocce ball Mm -hmm. or that um I've heard it called like a bazillion different things but the game where you've got the little like golf balls on strings and you spin it around and try to hook it through a pipe line oh, yeah mm -hmm. you know what it, do you have a name for that nope. I've heard it called so many different things mm -hmm. but yeah a few things to get the kids outside you know what I was thinking of doing this summer anyway <clears throat> that um might be kind of fun you know those I don't even know what they're called but they um they connect from one tree to another tree and they're like elastic bands and you work, it's like a tightrope basically. It's for practicing your balance. It's like, like a slack line? slack line? Maybe that's what it is. So like you would just connect it outside, usually tie it from one tree to another, you make it tight and then you just practice um, balance exercises on it, you know, mm -hmm. walk across the beam, you oh, know, stuff cool. like that. Yeah, I was, I was wanting to do that anyway, just for, you know, physical fitness, so. That might be kind of cool. I think those would be mine. And I think if I could stockpile a uh, non-essential, like if, if God were to come to me and say, Alana, um, like you don't have to worry about running out of calories. That's never going to happen. I'm going to allow you to also never run out of one luxury. <laughs> it would be coffee. I'm getting, Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, Ooh. Each time I make a cup, I'm like, well, should I? Shouldn't I? And then I remind myself, well, you know, I i don't think coffee even increases your fat, but that's what I'm using for my justification. I've got to, uh, <laughs> I've got to stay, I've got to stay um, pleasant. I'm not pleasantly plump. I've got to stay soft. <laughs> Just for now, we need Just to maintain. For now. I need then, my mom bod. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so just so you know, if you have that problem, of running out of coffee. So I roast coffee sometimes. I've right. gotten away from it in the winters because mm -hmm. it, if, if you've ever been around a place that roasts coffee, it smells like really burnt toast. And it's- Oh, I thought it would smell good. Like that good coffee smell. No, no? it smells like, oh. and you probably wouldn't have even known it, but if you go around like a, like a place that roasts their own coffee, you'll okay. smell this like really strong burnt toast smell. Really? And it's not pleasant. Mm. Okay. And it permeates everything. And so um, I have a coffee roaster. It's a small, you know, like one, I do a quarter pound at a time. And, um, but it, uh, it smells really bad when it vents and it, it I've oh. caught it on fire before because it builds up, you know, I'm like, anyway, mm -hmm. you got to really watch it. So I use it in the garage, but I have to have the door at least cracked. So okay. during the summer, it's fine during the spring, but mm -hmm. I've actually not roasted for over a year now just out of, cause I got out of the habit of it cause it got too I hard. know. Same with me and making bread. It's the yeah. same thing. Once you, once you stop doing something like that, it can take a while before you but get I have, in. But I have pounds and pounds and pounds of green beans. So I have thought to myself, cause I did grab a thing. Like, at um, canned or what do you mean? Oh, oh, green coffee beans. Oh, oh. Unroasted oh. coffee beans. You're like, what does green do beans have to do with your coffee, weirdo? <laughs> this is as much as I know about how to make coffee. I didn't even know they were green before you roasted them. Oh, it's fantastic. So okay. if you see the beans, so the beans, when you get them before they're roasted, they're green and waxy. Like you can actually kind of scrape the outside of them. They're almost like waxy. Interesting. And they smell like hay. They smell like okay. 
like a good kind of hay yeah. or like this is rotting grass kind of hay no, <laughs> okay like, like if you can picture like, i smell both kinds of hay no, like, a, like a clean farm smell you know really like that. that's yeah, cool it's really nice and then um it they keep when you know how when you roast coffee the coffee can go stale after a while if you keep it for too right. long Mm -hmm. It doesn't go stale when you store them green. They're, right, that would make so, sense. Yeah, they, they don't go stale. So you need to. So just so you know, we could arrange a drop off where, you know, we could wear gloves, do the drop off, you know, meet yeah, somewhere yeah. in our cars and I'll hook yeah. you up. I'll hook you, up. <laughs> you will be my supplier in case pandemic, <laughs> in case of coffee emergency that goes for anyone else in the Alaska area. Contact me. Oh, you're going to be set. Um, I have a question. What do you think this whole thing's going to be called? You, you uh, know how like there's the Great Depression. Right, yeah. You know what I mean? The Cold the, War. What do you think this is going to be called? The COVID pandemic of 2020. Yeah, uh, but that's kind of long, right? It is. Uh, just COVID maybe. Maybe they'll just call it COVID. I'm I mean, going to guess it's going to be known as the pandemic. Maybe. kind of like the plague not that you know i don't expect it to get that serious especially since right. we are more medically equipped i know there's fear of shortages i don't expect it to be like that but you know how it's just the plague and people know you're talking about I think, interesting yeah yeah i think this will be the pandemic and if it's not my second guess is going to be maybe something to do with isolation like the great isolation or something like that the great quarantine of 2020. oh that sounds scary doesn't isolation sound so much nicer than quarantine <laughs> it does and i've been throwing that word around a lot quarantine which you know it's not as far as i know there's you know there there have been i guess quarantines implemented but it does sound kind of you know yeah i think on TV. i'm this is i'm i'm drawing on two-year-old research but when i wrote one of my kennedy Spur novels about a pandemic mm -hmm. um my if i'm remembering right the because there's there's so many terms being thrown out so quarantine is kind of the most extreme and that's when somebody like a patient tests positive and is kept in medical isolation you know like the um the people will be wearing their hazmat suits if they have to go in and so that would be like a medical quarantine. And then isolation is where somebody who might be ex have been exposed or might be showing symptoms but haven't tested positive yet is kept kind of for observation. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the social distancing is more of a, um, this is like voluntarily what we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's the shelter in place, which in my mind, like social distancing is for people in states like Alaska, where it's not quite a mandate, although right. they're they're shutting down so many non-essentials. Like, did you hear yesterday? They're shutting down dentist yes. offices. And um, it's a little harrowing to think about. But one of the, the big reasons is because they don't want to they don't want the dentists using the gloves and the masks because so many hospitals in the lower 48 are, are experiencing shortages. I think that's a, that's a frightening reason, but it sounds like a good call. It um, is. Well, yeah. and I, I have a friend who's a dental hygienist who said that the aerosols created when you do dental treatments, mm. basically it's, it's one of the Everything highest airborne is that kind of risk machine? procedure. Okay. Yeah. That when they're spraying, when they're filling a filling a filling <clears throat> or when they're doing your cleaning, it sprays, mm -hmm. it aerosolizes the water mixed with your saliva and it just grows. One yeah. Of, one of the most, one of the highest chances of transmitting like okay. a virus. So it something. sounds like a good call. Yeah. yeah. But like you said, I'm, I think that call was made for both doctors and dentists to mm -hmm. preserve those gloves and masks and yeah. things like that for those that really need it. Yeah. I'm Never looking into, yeah, I'm looking into, um, how to get supplies so people can make masks. Um, Cause I know again, some places in the lower 48 are experiencing big shortages and my thought is okay, if, if we can get the supplies up here before Alaska gets into that kind of trouble, mm -hmm. hopefully we won't, but if we do, um, there's a lot of kids home right now looking for stuff to do, like what you were talking about with craft supplies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so I'm actually looking into that. I might even have like updates for people in the next day or two of ways. You know, my thought is um, we could do it locally. And if it turns out that the hospitals don't need it here, we could just ship it down to hospitals that do or donate it to nursing homes and then maybe find a way to get supplies down to people 
in other parts of the world who were, you know, they could do it for their local areas too. Yeah. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah. I don't sew, but I have a friend who um, is pretty crafty and works at Joanne. So we were actually texting this morning trying (sighs) to figure out, yeah, like how many, how many yards of what would we need and all of that. That's what I would get. I would get a sewing oh, yeah. machine because my sewing machine was destroyed in the earthquake. Was it? Oh. Yeah, it was. Sh- I, I had it up on a high shelf in our mudroom, and I actually checked it when I was taking inventory of all the stuff that was damaged. Right. I checked it, and it's in like a little like case thing, like a a cloth, like what do you call it? Like a. It has like a, a little cover. Elastic- a cover thing. Yeah. That has yeah. a little elastic thing. And I took it down and I just kind of peeked under and I was like, Oh, it looks fine. And then a few months later, um, I took it out to hem something and a big chunk of it had gotten knocked off and it was Aww. totally unusable. And I've never replaced it. I hadn't replaced yeah. it. And, you know, I just hadn't made a priority of it. Um, mm-hmm. and so, yeah, maybe I would get that because mm-hmm. I know my kids do like, to make stuff and I haven't spent Mm -hmm. a lot of time working with them to do sewing stuff but hearing what you're doing that'd be kind of fun to get involved with Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. and what a what an important way to to be involved I feel like yeah in as much as you can do something that makes you feel like you're making a difference Mm -hmm. it helps alleviate some of the fear because there are so many things that we don't we don't have control over that I feel like something like that. I was even thinking, like, you know me, when I get an idea, like my brain just kind of explodes and takes it like, um, you know how some people call it a brainstorm. Like, I don't know right. what's even more extreme than a storm, but that's that's what my brain does. A brain I was even NATO. Thinking, a brain NATO. I love it. So I was even thinking like, it could be fun. We could do virtual sew-ins. Like, I'm not a sewer. I'm going to, like, I'm, <laughs> I, even when I post on Facebook, I, I started with my church Facebook group to see like who can help me just figure out what I would need to make this happen. And I'm like, I don't know how to sew, but I could fundraise like a boss. So let's figure this out. (laughs) But you know, like having every Wednesday at 10, you know, jump onto a Google Hangouts and we're all going to be sewing our face masks or something. I don't know. That's cool. That's a neat idea. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm hoping that it, it works out because again, I just feel like, for me, I, I always feel better if I have a project I'm working on, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm not actively writing any new novels at this moment in time. And so this feels like a nice way to divert some energy and stuff like that. That's cool. Well, yeah. I have I have a cool story I wanted to share. And I've been kind of debating on like how detailed to get because I don't want to, I think I'm just going to share it and I think it's okay. okay. I think it's okay. Um, I can always edit it out. So this is the gossip disguised as prayer request moment. Yeah, of the yeah. Podcast. Now I'm not <laughs> gossip, but did exactly. you ever see that on Saturday Night Live? I don't. It doesn't ring a bell. So there was a character on Saturday Night Live, and I don't even remember what who played it. I think it was a mm-hmm. a man playing a woman. Oh, uh-huh. to make it funny, but right. But, uh, but this, you know, this, this old woman, you know, who's like yeah. basically supposed to be this church person, you know, right. it wasn't the church lady, but it was, but she would uh-huh. sit on this bench and she'd be like, now I'm not one to gossip, but did you see what she was wearing? Or, you know, <laughs> and she always uh-huh. prefaced, uh-huh. prefaced everything with, I'm not one to yeah. gossip. So this isn't yeah. gossip. The only reason I'm, I'm hesitant to tell the details is because when I was feeling kind of unhappy with this situation, I didn't share directly with the, the people involved, but at the same time, it was never, I I think it's fine. And I'm going to cut it out. We'll we'll edit out if we need. And now that I've built it up, it's going to be so anticlimactic. So, and then it'll just be, yeah. Okay. Thanks for sharing Jamie. Like, cause we cut everything else out. (laughs) Whatever this is. Yeah, that's right. So if you you see this suddenly cut, you'll know that I shared too much. So this is what happened. So, uh, (laughs) (laughs) sorry, (laughs) it wasn't that funny. (laughs) No, it wasn't. It was, it really was. Okay. Go on. So my husband is, he does sound for our church and they have, we're not having everyone meeting in Mm -hmm. church service. So they're recording it. And so they had a practice last night and then on Saturday, they're going to have an actual recording of the music. 
And when I heard about that, I, you know, even though there are not going to be a ton of people there, um, in my mind, I was like, why are they doing this? This is, um, you know, I, I was feeling critical. And I think I shared yesterday without mm -hmm. giving details that I was feeling kind of critical of some, some stuff that was, that was being decided. And as in I, like, it's not essential to meet. So why are you doing it's not it? essential to meet? Why are you doing mm -hmm. it? Why? Got it. You know, and so I just, in my mind was like, okay, I'm, I was feeling unhappy, but as the day went on, like my unhappiness kind of turned into bitterness. Like mm. well, this is potentially putting not just our family. Cause I'm, I'm mm -hmm. honestly not super worried necessarily. No, I, I know what you're saying. Others. We're in the like, same boat. Is, yeah. is this responsible? Cause we've been so, you know, we, we have one person coming in and out of our house who's equally concerned and careful as us. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so I was just, my mindset was like, this isn't essential. Why is this happening when yeah. there are other alternatives? So right. I went to God and was just like, you know, A, this involves our church and our leaders. And I will say that I have just never been more convinced of a group of leaders that are more committed to pray and hear from God. So mm -hmm. I absolutely believe that, that they are really seeking the Lord and that whatever they're receiving is, you know, that they're open to the wisdom of God and the decisions that they're making. And mm -hmm. I am not going to be the one to say, no, you're not doing the right thing, you know, but, right, right. Go, and, and so, uh, so my husband and I were talking about it and, um, and, and we just decided to pray like, God, take this bitterness away because this mm -hmm. isn't, this isn't right. Um, show us what we need to do. Does he need to say that he's not comfortable going in? Cause that's fine. Yeah. That's an option. Um, right. And so we prayed about it and you know, there were three new cases in Alaska mm -hmm. announced last night. So we're up to 12. And so it's starting to escalate a little bit more, but he felt like he needed to go and that he still was responsible to go. And the coolest thing happened. So he, he got there and he left and he's like, admittedly, I'm just, I kind of got a chip on my shoulder going to this thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he got there and he said the craziest thing happened. He sat down and uh, the worship pastor said something just offhandedly like, Hey, it's going to be kind of weird on Saturday performing because you're going to be performing to an empty church. But just remember we're doing this so that people can worship with their families at home and, and have, have worship and feel connected and have, you know, he didn't even go into all that, but the idea right. is mm -hmm. to have some sense of normalcy and see the right, worship team right. up there mm -hmm. virtually. And my husband said at that moment, he's like, it's like a physical wave, like washed over me of mm -hmm. this feeling, this unexplainable feeling that I was supposed to be there, that I was wow. doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. And he's like, that was incredible. That's I, neat. I just want to encourage, and, and as, and, and when he told me that story, I just started crying. Cause I was like, this is, this is so, God is so good. So yeah. I, I just want to encourage people listening because everyone is going to have these things, these, these situations where, mm -hmm. um, where whether we're in this time or not, where, but especially now when we're looking at other people, when we're being careful and, and wanting to be as careful as possible, or if you're on the other end thinking people are being too careful and too crazy about it, it's so important to, I, I think just even in feeling bitter about other people or feeling division among especially mm -hmm. Christians or believers, if we mm -hmm. just go to God and say, this feeling isn't right. Make me see things in the right way. Help me to a have wisdom to know, because it doesn't mean that, I mean, maybe the right thing would have been for our family, for him not to go. And God would have shown him that because, mm -hmm. you know, but, but for God to just going to God and saying, give me wisdom, give me direction, help me to see your purposes today. And, and I'm going to say that, you know, let's just take it to an extreme and say that, due to going to that practice or due to going to, to play music, my husband is exposed and brings the virus home. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there's no guarantee that that's not going to happen, it, right. you know? but, mm -hmm. but I'm confident that 
that God revealed his will. My husband was supposed to be there. He's supposed to be there on Saturday to record and, and, you know, the music, he will be careful. He will be careful. Like if he was going into a grocery store where he would be exposed to other people, probably more so than he's being exposed to people in our large church building with seven people there, you know? So anyway, it's, it's just, um, I don't know. I, I'm kind of rambling on, but I just want to share that God is sovereign in all of this. God is talking to us. If you get in a position where you feel conflicted or you feel bitter or whatever, just don't forget to pray about it and, and check yourself in that. And I really believe that God is going to give you the direction and the wisdom and where to go. Because if we had just kind of continued in our feelings and either gone along with it or like my husband said, if he, cause I actually, I was, I was on the verge of writing an email and being like, I don't know if I'm comfortable with this. I think my husband's not going to be part of this, which I knew mm -hmm. that he, he needed to be the one to talk about that. But right. if we had just opted out without praying about it, without him feeling led to go, I think we might still feel bitter. Mm -hmm. and there might be some awkwardness or, you know, so yeah, I, I would just encourage us all as we're interacting with friends or Christian or not to just continue to extend grace and where you're feeling yourself not extending grace or being angry, um, go to God with that because this is not the time for bitterness or division. It's true, but can I temper that with like, please continue to use common sense? You know, like I heard oh, about a church absolutely. where the police had to come break up a meeting because the pastor was, you know, it was kind of, um, hey, God's bigger than this virus. He can keep us all from getting sick. We're still going to meet no matter what the government says. Right. I, I, I'm going to quarantine shame. <laughs> like, no, yes, God can absolutely protect you. If you're like, if you're in the medical care system and you're working with sick patients, I absolutely believe that God can miraculously cover you with divine protection from catching the virus. That doesn't mean he's going to, but I absolutely believe that he can. But just like Jesus wasn't going to throw himself off the cliff just to prove that the angels were going to catch him. I also don't think that we should deliberately walk into like extreme situations. Like what your husband did, I think is fine. I think that's a judgment call. Right. But, and there's you still know, in the guidelines of yes. small gatherings yeah. using but, social distancing. But no, you are absolutely right. Don't yeah. just say, oh God, I'm bitter because my pastor told me to anoint myself with oil and I'll be protected. And I don't know if that's really true, but I guess yeah. I better go along with it. No. Right. Use, yeah. use good sense. And, you know, I think the biggest thing, kind of like what you said, all of this social distancing is for the collective good. Mm -hmm. It's not to protect you and your immediate family. You know, I mean, that's one of the side benefits, <clears throat> but really this is something that's for the collective good. Um, it's been proposed that one of the reasons why South Korea has recovered a lot more, um, smoothly and valiantly and less tragically is because like Eastern Asia knows how to be collective, <laughs> you know, kind of for the same reason, like after the big um, Tokyo tsunami, like, I don't know, 10 years ago or something, there were pictures where there were still food items on the shelves, food items and vending machines where, you know, in the States there would have been looting and riots and fighting for toilet paper. And I think now is now's not the time. Okay. I'm just going to stop there, but don't look down your nose at people who are self-distancing. If you don't feel scared of this virus and if you don't feel, if you feel like the entire world is overreacting, it is absolutely your right to believe that. And I think that maybe there is the potential that panic is being deliberately or accidentally kind of, um, uh, flared up and things like that, but we're not sequestering ourselves because we're terrified of a little virus. We're sequestering right. ourselves because if the majority of people do this, it's going to allow the healthcare system to take care of the people who need it, you yeah. know? And I don't know, to, to me, it's not a matter of whether you're 
trusting God, who is the great healer. It has really very little to do with that. And, and just doing what, what's going to be best for others. Yeah, no, I definitely agree that there is, um, that we need to, well, at the very, very least, I think we need to comply. Even if you're on the side of like, wow, people are overreacting. You need to understand that we've been given guidelines from our government who honestly knows more about this. I, I'm sure they know more about it than we do as, as everyday people. We've been getting information, but they have sat in on these um, simulations of mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. contagion and what could happen if drastic measures aren't taken. Right. And that's a scary thing and a real mm -hmm. thing that mm -hmm. has driven a lot of this stuff. And when you haven't seen that and when you haven't understood what it could look like. Um, I think that's, that's hard to see, but yeah, I think so too. I, I think yeah. God has totally given us wisdom. And when we use wisdom, um, tempered with just praying for guidance from God in our decision-making, mm -hmm. I think that's a great combination of, you know, don't be a follower of how mm -hmm. other people are handling themselves just because you think, you should do what they do, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's It really is at time to be discerning, wise as serpents, all of that yeah. kind of thing. Um, is there any kind of specific issue you wanted to focus on during our prayer time today? I was thinking about one. Oh, well, I was thinking about Iran and Italy in particular, which I know, like, just reading that Iran had the highest death toll in the history, you know, of this. Or was it Italy? Which one? Was it Italy? I thought it was Iran. Okay. Was it? I don't know. I wasn't sure. Let me just fact check, but I'm pretty sure it was Iran okay. that, that had, let's see. Yeah, no, I think it's absolutely important. But both, to be, both of them have been yeah. very hard hit. I know others have. Um, yeah, I don't know. I can't. But I, yeah. I just saw, no, you know, it's, it's getting bad in some spots. Yeah. So not even, you know, it doesn't even have to be just Iran and Italy, but cause I know there are mm -hmm. other countries where it's, it's really surging. Um, yeah. it, just, just to pray for the, just thinking about the individual people there, um, what they're going through, um, that there are people right now that are just sitting there waiting to see if they're, you know, they're going to be able to be treated. I know, yeah. Dying, you know, so yeah, I guess that's, that's big on my heart now is just like in some of these places where it's really, really gotten bad. Yeah. I don't know. And what in a you? way, have... no, I think that's perfect. And just in a way, I almost feel like we owe it to places like Iran and Italy. Like if, at least for me personally, if I wasn't hearing the how how dire things are in some other countries i wouldn't be as compelled to be this serious about it um right now i'm a hundred percent behind the social distancing i see that it's important and essential and really i almost feel this is a funny way to look at it i was the youngest and my brother's a year and a half older than me and he got in more trouble than i did because I learned from his mistakes. And I almost feel like, I don't wanna say these other countries made mistakes because I don't think they knew at the time how bad it was going to get. I think they did though. I think they, I think they it could be, that they made could some be. pretty big mistakes, yeah. I think though that truly, if, if Americans specifically were not seeing how bad it's gotten in other places, there would be far fewer people complying with the social distancing right. mandates and recommendations. And so I almost feel like we owe them, I don't know if gratitude's the right word or just, just to appreciate the fact that they're going through horrible, horrible things. And yeah, I don't know what else to add to that. So let's go ahead and, and pray for those areas. Yeah. I'll start. God, we are so thankful for you, and we do acknowledge you as the most powerful, the most mighty, and you are everywhere, God. You are with the people who are sick, 
You are with the doctors and nurses who are scared and frazzled. You are with those who are dying. You are with those who are waiting for test results and scared. God, we just thank you so much for that. And I thank you for the sense of just peace and unity and hope that we can have. Um, I do pray for an amazing Sunday for churches worldwide who are finding unique ways to worship together. And we pray especially for the situation in Europe. We give you praise that things in South Korea and China seem to be improving. And we pray especially for Iran and for Italy and for the healthcare systems over there that are so overwhelmed. The doctors and nurses who are just putting their lives at risk, God. Um, I pray in the States for these medical students who are being fast tracked to becoming MDs just because they need more people to help. We just pray for your absolute grace, God. And I just pray that this would last for exactly long as it needs to last and no farther. And it would get exactly as bad as it needs to get and no worse. And that whatever lessons and blessings that you have for us as a world, that we would learn those quickly so that we could graduate from this trial. And we do just pray that when we emerge, that our societies and our churches and our families would be so much more connected and appreciative of all your wonderful blessings. God, we just um, thank you. I thank you for our churches. I thank you that even though most churches are not meeting in person, that um, that our leaders are doing everything that they can to try and provide us with worship from at home. And I thank you for my church. And I just thank you for the the picture of your Holy Spirit, just bringing unity and helping us to to just um, maintain fellowship, maintain the right attitudes. And I just pray for all of us, for all of our interactions with other believers, especially God, that if there is even a hint of bitterness, even a hint of frustration, that you would help us to just go to you because more than ever as a body, we need to be unified and we need to be a light. We need to be that city on a hill in the way that we conduct ourselves, both in the way that we are careful and protective of those that, that are vulnerable, and in the ways that we interact with each other during this time and the ways that we work through our issues, people are watching, I think, more than ever. Lord, I just lift up um, each of our pastors um, that you would give them absolute wisdom how to navigate these difficult times and making these difficult decisions. I know it's got to be so hard balancing this responsibility, this grave responsibility of shepherding a flock. And at the same time, protecting them and how best to do that, how best to supply their needs and at the same time do so in a way that's um, protecting the health of people. God, we just pray for wisdom that you would pour out your, your wisdom that is so much higher than that of this world, that you would provide them with creative ways to get the gospel out. And God, I just pray that, that even more people would hear the gospel as a result of so many churches going online and that your your word would go out, that it would not return empty. I pray the same for these countries, for Iran and for Italy in particular, and, and also just for all countries affected by the virus. Father, that you would be at work, that believers in those countries would be a light, that there would be something totally tremendously different about them that would draw people to them with gravity that they can't escape and that your word would go out and would just, um, that the gospel would spread in those places, that it would bring hope and that it would bring life and salvation to people that are hurting. And I just pray that people that are sick, people that are feeling hopeless or scared would turn to you in these times, Lord, that you would just display your power in ways that never could have been displayed if life had just gone plugging along as usual be glorified in all of this, Lord. And we just thank you so much that we have hope in a God who is bigger than any of these difficult things in this difficult time. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Jamie, for 
keeping me sane and having someone to talk to. <laughs> it's been nice just having a video conference every day just to check in. I've, it's been great. I've really, really enjoyed it. So yeah, me too. We appreciate you guys listening, Jamie. I appreciate you. And hopefully we will connect again real soon. All righty.